Hey guys, headed out to the west side for a uh, trouble call. We've got a tank site with a solar charge converter. We've got a single 48 volt panel tied onto it. And our charge controller keeps blinking the fault indicator whenever we wire it up for 24 volts. Um, we want to use 24 volts. We're running a little Kingfisher RTU radio transmitting unit. And right now we've got it temporarily wired for 12 volts and it's not throwing any codes. The charge controller doesn't have much for an interface, but we looked into it and it does have an app and we got the driver and the cables and the app to connect to it with my laptop. I'm assuming it got configured somehow to 12 volts on, fir on first power up and then ever since it thinks it wants 12 volts and that's why it's happy when it gets 12 and then whenever you give it 24 it's doing a fault blink this is the blinking light says uh, connect the app so the, the LED blinking doesn't really tell us too much and then the only way to change the configuration of the charge controller is with the app connected to it uh, there's no dip switch or anything so yeah, we'll head out there and uh, connect to it and see if we can figure out. Hopefully get them running in 24 volts. All right, see you there. All right, here we are. Here's our tank control panel. Solar panel, antenna. Uh, and here's this blue solar charge controller from Victron Energy. So right now we've got them wired up in parallel, 12 volts DC. This guy's working, everything's happy, but we want to run them in 24 volts DC. We've got this temporarily wired, this Kingfisher RTU, into its backup battery ports, which take 12 volts, but we want to use its primary power source of 24. So the first thing I'm going to do is just try and connect to this thing. Because if I can't connect to it, then there's no sense in doing any changes. Once I can connect to it, then I can change these to series so that we have 24 volts. I was just looking up online to see if there's a driver or anything. I'm at their website and I'm not seeing anything specifically to this. So we'll just try plugging the cable in and see, see what happens. Okay, here's our app. There's a tiny little port. It's in. There we go. Perfect. So I'll plug in the cable, blue solar charger. Pops right up. Don't see the product you're looking for? Nope. Uh, that's the product I'm looking for. The firmware update is mandatory. It needs to be completed. Okay, if you say so. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, that was easy to connect. All right, it looks like a nice little home page here. We can maximize that. Good, it's saying how much power we're using. This is cool. It gives you a whole history of usage. Battery state, battery voltage. Trends. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, let's go up here to settings. Battery settings. The battery voltage is set to 12. This makes sense because it faults when you wire it to 24. Can I change it just by clicking on it? Ooh, look at that. I can change it just by clicking on it. Okay, so... Good. I think we can stay connected. And I wonder what happens if I shut off everything coming to it. If I can still be connected. So that was the battery, the solar positive, and the load positive all shut off there on those, those three breakers right there. Looks like... No. No, it needs some kind of power to see it. Okay. We'll just disconnect. 
can put you in the shade. And we'll get this switched over to 24 volts. Kind of what I thought, um, the reason for the fault. I don't know how it initialized in 12 volts, but somehow it, it became a 12 volt charge controller. So, and then when it got wired for 24, it uh, basically saying, I'm not happy. This is not right. It's probably 10 now. Okay, so. Get the negatives off first. The positives. So it was in parallel, but now we're going to put it in series. The way we're going to do that. Move him there. Move him there. And we'll come down with this positive onto this terminal. Good. We'll get rid of this. That one. Then we'll connect our negative to our positive of our second battery. So batteries in parallel, just like circuits in parallel, the voltage stays the same. The available current is greater. And batteries in series, the voltage is cumulative or greater, I guess. It adds up. And the current rating or total available current stays the same. So parallel voltage stays the same, current can go up. Current is higher, rated current is higher. Series, voltage goes up, current stays the same. So we should have 24 volts from here to here. Turn that on. Let's see. Volts DC. Positive there, volts DC. Negative 27. Perfect. Yeah, a nice high float voltage. A little bit high. All right, high enough. And then we need to change a little bit of our load wiring up here. We want to come off of these backup battery terminals that we were on, because these are supposed to just take a singular 12 volt battery for the Kingfisher. Instead, we're going to come down here and go on to the actual power supply, which is 24 volt rated. That goes on like so. Okay, so now when we power up 
when we power this guy up, we are going to see it in a fault state because it's thinking it's set up for a 12 volt battery. So let's power up. And a little blue light. Boom, just like that. What a wonderful app. I like these. These charge controllers are chill. They're really user friendly and they have a whole bunch of data on them, which is nice. Uh, once you get the proprietary cable to connect to them. See, there's our fault right there. Battery voltage too high. Notification. This error can be due to other charging equipment connected to the battery or a fault in the charge controller. It can also occur if the battery voltage is set to a lower voltage than the actual battery voltage. So we'll go over here, we'll go battery, 12 volt, change it to 24. Be aware that setting a wrong battery voltage, battery voltage can cause permanent damage. Make sure that the selected value matches your battery bank. Use this code to confirm this setting change. One, four, two. Oh, thank goodness. I was worried they were going to say I need to get a factory code here. Factory authorized personnel only. That would be horrible. Oh, and it cleared at 225. So now... Good. Is there a way to clear that? So now it's green. Are we still getting the fault? We've got a solid yellow. What does that mean? I bet if I go out to the main page. RTU is up and running. Solid yellow means it's in absorption mode. That's what it means. Okay. Well, great. No more blinking lights. Fault lights. And just like I thought, yeah, it was just the battery setting was wrong. Cool. That's pretty easy. Uh, let's load up. Uh, hopefully there's no battery life here. Okay, cool. Yeah, not much else to do here. Back out. Very cool. I know these guys also have models that have Bluetooth, and I've connected to them with my phone before. This one, though, doesn't have the Bluetooth, so I have to do this old-fashioned, antique, hardwired connection. But, uh, yeah. I think we're all good. Let the operator know that uh, everything's back to normal. Yep, now it's back into float mode. That's good. Close you. Close you. Sweet. That was easy. All right. Get a killer view. All right. See you on the next one.